Happy feast day of St. Thomas Beckett. Today, President Trump made a proclamation for a day of, of observance for St. Thomas Beckett. I've had long devotion for St. Thomas Beckett. I have a son named Beckett Marshall, named after St. Thomas Beckett. So when I woke up this morning and was drinking my coffee and I saw that President Trump had proclaimed a day of observance for Thomas Beckett, I was shocked in a good way. And then my wife said, did you see Trump made a St. Thomas Beckett proclamation? So today I'm going to go over the proclamation. Here's a quick look at it. You can see here at the very end of the proclamation, it says, Now therefore I, Donald J. Trump, Trump, President of the United States, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim December 29th, 2020, as the 850th anniversary of the martyrdom of St. Thomas Beckett, I invite the people of the United States to observe the day in schools and churches and customary places of meeting with appropriate ceremonies in commemoration of the life and legacy of Thomas Beckett. Wow. I'm going to explain shortly after we pray why I think President Trump chose this day and chose this Catholic saint. I think it has... Uh, extreme importance as we move into 2021. So let's pray and get into it. In nomine Patris, et Fidei, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in celi, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniant regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra. Panum nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et emite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libra nos amalo. Amen. St. Thomas Beckett, pray for us. In nomine Patris, et Fidei, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, you may not know who St. Thomas Beckett is, so I'm going to give you a little uh, short story on who Beckett was. Here he is right here. Um, probably most people today know Beckett from one of, or maybe both, one of two places. T.S. Eliot wrote a famous play called Murder in the Cathedral. It's a great little play, and it tells the story of Henry II, King Henry II. You've heard of King Henry VIII. There is also King Henry II. He wasn't a good guy. Or they've seen the 1964 film simply titled Beckett. It stars Richard Burton as Thomas Beckett, and Peter O'Toole as King Henry II. If you haven't seen this film, you need to go and see it. Rent it, download it. I don't know how you see it nowadays. I think I used to have a DVD, but I don't even, I, the other day I couldn't even find a DVD player in my house. You need to see Beckett. I would play some scenes from it, but I'm afraid that YouTube would then censor block my video. Every time now I use a little clip, YouTube says, bad boy, don't do that. But the excommunication scene in Beckett is absolutely incredible. So make sure, I can't remember if there's anything naughty or bad in that film. Uh, I know that Henry II and Beckett weren't always the, the most holy of men, and there might be some bad stuff in that film. So parents, maybe watch it ahead of time. It's been many years, maybe 10 years since I've seen it. So Thomas Beckett was born in 1119 or 1120, and he died in 1170. That makes to on this day, December 29th. And the king at that time, Henry II, like most kings back then, and like most kings today in governments, want weak, scared, timid, feckless bishops. That has always been the power play of governments monarchs, parliaments, kings, tyrants. They want weak, compromised bishops and priests because the strength of, really the strength of the people, I don't want to sound too democratic here, but if you look even in the days of Constantine and Constantius moving into Theodos Theodosius, all these monarchs 
they wanted the church to push forward their political agendas. It's very powerful if you're if you're a tyrant, if you're corrupt, you really want the clergy to do your dirty work for you, to do a little infiltration, if you will. So this has always been something. This goes back to, well, Pontius Pilate, the Sanhedrin, even in the Old Testament, the evil kings. They want the priesthood to serve at their leisure. And this is what we see going on in the 1100s. King Henry II wants to do a number of things. First off, he wants to tax the cathedrals and the churches. Money's coming into these cathedrals and churches, and he wants a piece of that pie. He's like, I'm the king. This is my kingdom. I should be able to tax the churches. Also, the monasteries and the land. Monasteries were bringing in wheat, barley, wine, honey, all kinds of things. The king said, hey, I want to tax what the monks are producing. Also, the kings wanted to appoint the bishops. They don't want bishops appointed from overseas or by the pope or any bishops who would step up to them and resist them. So the kings want to appoint and invest, investiture controversy, the archbishops and the bishops of their kingdom. And then, last of all, the tyrants don't want the church clerics to be tried in papal courts. They want them tried in royal courts. And historically, the church had its own papal ecclesiastical courts in which clergy were tried. In all four of these regions, you can see that Henry II and all tyrants basically want to take the church and put it under the state and make it a department of the state. This actually happened under Henry VIII. He successfully did the whole thing. He broke the whole thing off, except for a few, the recusant Catholics, St. John Fisher, Thomas More, and he created it as a department of the state. So we see this happening under Henry II. Now, Thomas Becket was of, he was not noble. He was low born. He was friendly um, with the church. Uh, he had been an archdeacon beforehand. And Henry II thought, well, if I put in my buddy Thomas Becket, he'll kind of look the other way and let me do what I want to do against the Pope and allow me to make the church subservient to my throne and to my scepter. That's the backdrop in the 1100s. Now, when Thomas Becket was made Archbishop of Canterbury, which is the highest archiepiscopal diocese in England, when he was consecrated, at first he agreed. He even signed or agreed to sign the Constitutions of Clarendon, which were the demands of Henry II. But shortly thereafter, he changed his positions, he sided with the Pope, and he resisted Henry II. Now, Henry II at some point said, who will rid me of this meddlesome priest? And some knights went into the cathedral while he was celebrating the holy sacrifice of the Mass with their swords and smashed him over the head with the sword, busting open his cranium. Now, the last words as this happened, Thomas St. Thomas Becket, on this day, 850 years ago, said, For the name of Jesus and the protection of the church, I am ready to embrace death. A third knight inflicted a grave wound on the fallen one, and with this blow, his crown, which was large, separated from his head so that the blood turned white from the brain. Yet no less did the brain turn red from the blood. It purpled the appearance of the church. The fifth man, not a knight but a cleric who had entered with the knights, placed his foot on the neck of the holy priest and precious martyr, it is horrible to say, and scattered the brains with the blood across the floor, exclaiming to the rest, We can leave this place, knights. He will not get up again. And, Hen and uh, Thomas Becket entered into heaven as a martyr for Jesus Christ. When the people found out that their beloved archbishop was killed on the church floor before the altar in the church, and you can see in this picture the bloody head of St. Thomas Becket, 
When they heard this, they mourned and they demanded justice against King Henry II and these knights. These knights went on the run. Henry II was excommunicated. Eventually, he did penance at the tomb. If you watch the film, I believe he gets whipped and scourged at the tomb of Becket. And he promises the Pope that he'll go on crusade to the Holy Land in reparation for his sins against this holy archbishop. By the way, Henry II never fulfilled his promise. He didn't go on crusade. So that's the story of St. Thomas Becket. And his tomb became the most holy place in all of England, besides the shrine of Our Lady of Walsingham. He was a symbol of the church standing up to a tyrant, living for Jesus Christ in the church as above the state, as above the king. Now, what do you think Henry VIII did when he created his own Church of England? He banned the celebration of St. Thomas Becket. He removed it from the church's calendar, and he removed all remembrance of Thomas Becket. Why? Because Thomas Becket represented the kind of archbishop who would have resisted Henry VIII and his tyranny. Now, where do this, does this put us in 2020? And why did President Trump issue a proclamation asking all Americans to honor and observe this day as a St. Thomas Beckett Day. This is almost like, well, it's not a canonization, but President Trump is adding this day in 2020 to be a day of observance. Let me go down to the very end here and I'll read it to you in case you weren't with us uh, at the beginning. Move this over a bit. Now, therefore, I, Donald J. Trump, Trump, President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim December 29th, 2020, as the 850th anniversary of the martyrdom of St. Thomas Beckett. And then here's the key point. This is the point I want you to listen to. President Trump goes on to say, I invite the people of the United States to observe the day in schools and churches and customary places of meeting with appropriate ceremony, ceremonies in commemoration of the life and legacy of Thomas Beckett. Now, why is President Trump calling on Americans to honor Thomas Beckett in schools, churches, and public places with the memory of Thomas Beckett? I believe that President Trump, through what's gone on in the last year, realizes that the United States of America is about to pull a Henry II. The United States, in the person of especially the left, like Joe Biden, they want weak, feckless bishops who will do whatever they say. They don't want an Archbishop of Canterbury, an Archbishop Thomas Beckett, to say, we stand up to you. We will not allow the king or his knights, whatever the modern day version of that is, presidents, vice presidents, Congress, Senate, judges, military, we will not allow these government agencies to infringe on the rights of Jesus Christ and the Holy Church. Bishops who would stand up even unto death, having their head whacked with swords and then their brains smeared upon the tile floor of the church. Do we have such a bishop in the United States of America in 2020? Do we have an Archbishop Thomas Beckett to stand up against what's going to happen in 2021? Donald Trump is not a Catholic. You've heard me say this. People say, Taylor Marshall worships Donald Trump. No, I don't. I disagree on, with Donald Trump on many things. He's not a Catholic. He's not a saint. He's not a bishop. He's not a pastor, anybody's pastor. He's a president. But when I see things like this, I think whether he knows it or not, he is somehow, by God's grace, his his actual grace is not sanctifying grace, but by actual graces. 
he is somehow signaling to the Catholic people that what we need is a Thomas Beckett. We don't need, I mean, I'm on YouTube. I'm just a layman. I have no authority. I'm not in the magisterium. My thoughts are my thoughts. I try to follow the historical, true Catholic magisterium to every jot and tittle. St. Thomas Aquinas, the 73 books of the Bible, of the Catholic canon, the church fathers. I try to do all these things. But ultimately, we need this. This is what we need. I've spent the last few days reading about the Arian crisis, St. Athanasius, the early church fathers, and how they suffered and were exiled and were martyred and were tortured by the state because they would not, they would not submit to the heresy of Arianism and the false authority of Constantius II, son of Constantine, who was an Arian and was imposing heresy from the top into the church, Constantius II, the heretic emperor, assembled around him compromised archbishops and bishops, like Eusebi of Nicomedia. They promoted heresy so that they could gain favor with the emperor, the heretical emperor. What do they care about? Political prestige and political power. What's the way to political power and prestige in this world? Heresy, apostasy. You become perfidious so that you can gain some power. We see that today with the Jesuits, perfidious Jesuits, modernists, soft, effeminate, lax cardinals and bishops, Popes who deny the miracles of Jesus Christ. Ecumenism that puts other religions and idols and other gods above the most holy trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In 2020, we see what King Henry II wanted 850 years ago, and that is weak, soft, effeminate, feckless bishops. And today we are reminded that the crown of martyrdom is the way forward. I don't know what's going to happen in 2021. I think it's going to be worse. That's just a guess. I don't know. But in 2021, we need this. Thomas Beckett saying to the king with all his executive powers, no, you cross the line. Instead, what do we see? In 2020, bishops bowing down to the governors, bishops bowing down on mask mandates, social distancing. Oh, you can't come to mass unless you sign up on a sign up sheet. We're going to keep pews empty on Christmas because why? False obedience. If people want to come into the church and worship, the Holy Trinity, to experience and worship Jesus Christ in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, we cannot close the doors. We cannot put tape and ribbon on pews and say, don't sit here. Literally turning baptized people away from the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Where is St. Thomas Becket who turns to the governor, the king, the president, the tyrant, and says, no, you've gone too far. You can't do this. If you want to keep pushing it, you're excommunicated. You fall under the censure of the church. And if you want to kill me, you're going to have to kill me because I'm not backing down. I stand with Jesus Christ and all the saints, including John the Baptist, who did the same thing, and Thomas Beckett. So, I think this is great. And if we see executive powers in 2021 that fight against the Catholic Church and do the things that Henry II wanted, tax the church, persecute the church, choose bishops. Look what Pope Francis has allowed in China. 
The Chinese communist government is choosing the bishops. Henry VIII only wishes he could have had that arrangement that Pope Francis has set up with the Chinese. Communist, Marxist, atheist, godless, materialistic politicians get to choose the weak, feckless, compromised bishops. And what was going on in America, we just figured this out in the last couple of years, is you had powerful political people who pretended to be Catholic, like Biden, working with the evil Judas Cardinal, ex-Cardinal Theodore McCarrick, to appoint effeminate, compromised, modernist bishops in the United States of America for years. And that's why we're here right now. That's why we have these problems in the church. When you have compromised, immoral, sexually immoral men, Choosing the bishops like McCarrick, the kingmaker, the bishop maker. You wonder why we're in a situation where diocese after diocese is saying, no, no Christmas mass. Well, we'll have a Christmas mass, but 25 people can go, or 25%, or 50%, all these arbitrary rules to keep people away from God. These are your McCarrick bishops. They were chosen to be your bishop by the people who want to make the church weak. They were chosen because they were not this guy. They were not Thomas Beckett. Anyone who, who stands up to the government in, tw in, in our time is not going to be made a, a bishop. You think they're going to make Father Altman a bishop? Really? In 2020, you think so? No way. No way. Well, I would just like to say thanks to President Trump for this gesture. I don't know if it'll go anywhere, but I think it's noteworthy that a president asks the American people to celebrate the memory of Thomas Beckett in schools, churches, and public places. So I'm going to do that today. I have a son named after him, Beckett Marshall. Maybe my son, Beckett Marshall. Maybe he'll be a Beckett. Say a prayer for him. We need some Becketts. Beckett bishops. That's what we're going to call them. We need some Beckett bishops. Go on Twitter, hashtag that parlor. Hashtag, we need some Beckett. Hashtag Beckett bishops. Beckett bishops. They look at the tyrant in the face and they say, no. No, we resist you. We resist the encroachment of the state over the church because the church as the kingdom of God is over the state, not the other way around. All right, let's pray in Ave Maria that God will choose and elevate a modern day St. Thomas Beckett. Oremos. In nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or per nobis peccatoribus, nunc et or mortis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio, Spiritui Sancto. Sicuterat in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secula, seculorum. Amen. Mighty God, we thank you for the witness of St. Thomas Becket. We ask that by his prayers, that we would be strengthened, that you would raise up for us a St. Thomas Becket who would defend the rights of Jesus Christ the King and the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Nomini Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, friends. Pray the rosary every single day. If you don't pray the rosary, you're not on the team. 2021 is upon us. This week, we'll be going into a new year, 2021. Let's make a commitment, not a vow, not a promise, but let's make a commitment, an intention to pray the rosary for 365 days in 2021. 
Let's do that. Let's read the Bible. At New St. Thomas Institute, I have a Catholic guide on to read the Bible every year. Also at New St. Thomas Institute, I have two online curricula. One on the Old Testament. We go through every book of the Old Testament and we look at the typology of Christ and the church and the Virgin Mary and the saints in every single book of the Old Testament. It's a Catholic Bible course. And then I also do the New Testament and we go through every book of the New Testament looking for and teaching the doctrines and dogmas of the Catholic Church. You can get all of that at NewStThomas.com. Do I have a button? Thought I did, but I don't. It's just NewStThomas.com. Maybe that's something you can do for New Year's. I also just finished yesterday editing the history of the Roman Rite and the traditional Latin Mass. The whole thing is complete. If you want to get deep and learn about the Latin Mass and the history of the Roman Rite from St. Peter till Vatican II, you can also take that at NewStThomas.com. You can take all three of those courses plus a lot more. It's all the same tuition. You don't have to pay extra for anything. Um, so check that out at NewStThomas.com. NewStThomas.com. I'll put it on the screen. I, I thought there was a button here, but it's not here. NewStThomas.com. Notice the two T's for St. Thomas. Kind of appropriate since today's St. Thomas Beckett. Didn't plan it that way. St. Thomas Beckett was born on the Feast of St. Thomas. My institute is named after Thomas Aquinas. So you can do that. Maybe 2021, we take it up a level. We pray the rosary, we read the Bible every day. We take some online courses. I'd be happy to be the one who helps you with that online at NewStThomas.com. Um... Fathers, read the Bible to your kids, even if it's a short passage. A little short passage can open up a great conversation at dinner time. And get a good catechism. Train yourself in traditional doctrine. I think it's going to get rougher in 2021. That's my take on it. I'm not a prophet. I'm not a seer. Uh, I'm not a mystic. But looking at the political landscape and the church landscape, I just get the sense we're gonna we're going downhill right now, and by downhill I mean bad, not good. So let's get serious. Let's be real Catholics. You know, let's start going to confession. Let's start going to the traditional Latin Mass. Let's get our kids baptized, traditional Roman Rite, confirmation, traditional. Let's go everything traditional. We don't need the new nonsense. Let's go old school, old school, not the new stuff, the old school. And if you want to know why it's so important that we persevere with the old liturgies and the old rites, again, NewStThomas.com, I got a whole course on Latin Mass in the history of the Roman Rite. All right. Well, that's a show right there. Please share this show. Please like this show. If you're new, please subscribe. There's a subscribe button in the bottom right corner and under this video. And uh, remember, our Lord Jesus Christ says you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless. Godspeed. Happy feast day of St. Thomas Beckett. And if I don't see